God bless you, family. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm excited that you chose to tune in and watch us today. This word that you're about to hear, I believe is gonna bless your life. It's gonna be impactful. I'll be teaching from this subject, the power of the blood. I believe this is a particular subject that we don't teach and talk about enough in church anymore. The power of the blood. It is redemptive. It is restorative. It is healing. Stay tuned. We're talking about the power of the blood. God bless you. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, starting at verse 6. Holler back at your boy. When you got the word, say, I got the word. Online, drop some fire in the chat. Let me know you got the word. This is chapter 1, starting at verse 6. This is what it says. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Talking about Jesus. I want to read that again. To the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of his grace. Here it is, that he lavishes on us that he lavishes on us. I want to focus on verse 7 where it says, In him we have redemption through his blood. <laughs> I, I'm, I've been trying to teach y'all how to just praise God off the word. I, I think I'm going to try that again. In him we have redemption through his blood. That was still like 30% of y'all. I'm going to say this again for those who understand what this means and how important and impactful this has been to your life. In him, we have the redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the richness of his grace. For the time allotted to me, FLM, I want to teach from this particular subject, the power in the blood. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's power in the blood. That's the wrong neighbor because they ain't shouting yet. That's the wrong one. Look behind you. Find, you know what? Find three people. Get up out the sheets and find three people online. Go ahead and type that in the chat. Let them know there's power. Okay, that's one and a half persons. I said tell three people that there's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Power in the blood. Power in the blood. I know these are sermon titles and these are subjects that we don't talk about or teach a lot about anymore in the church. We become more inspirational in our teaching, but you can't be inspirational in your teaching unless you understood the power of the blood. See, so you got to know what saved you, and you got to know how it saved you. Y'all might have to come get me this morning. You got to know what saved you. You got to know how it saved you in order to understand the rest. Because to understand the rest of the book, you have to understand where it started. And you, and please, everybody, please try not to lose your cool for everybody who understands this, is that your life begun when the blood was shed. Not just a life, a new life. Okay, not just a new life, but the Bible calls it abundant life. The Greek word for that is zoe life, which means the life I intended. It happened through the blood. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you one more shot. Let's pause for the cause real quick. Can we just give God a praise for the How would you act if I told you if you knew what saved you? How do you say thank you when you know what delivered you? How do you say thank you when you know what heals you? How do you say thank you when you know what maintains your sanity? I, 
I'm gonna try not to be a. a, a <laughs> I'm gonna try to mix my teaching a little bit. And, but I, I, I don't, you know. And 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 I remember growing up in church when we it was at least two things that we would shout and the church would go crazy: Jesus and the blood. There were at least two things that you didn't have to say nothing else in church, and, and but that was significant because we understood we had good teacher, we understood the power and the impact of Jesus in the blood. So when somebody would walk in church or stand up and say Jesus or the blood, I, I mean it wasn't too much prayer, Teddy. Going, which is the blood of Jesus, the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood, the blood. I mean, touch every the blood of Jesus, the blood, the, because we understood the impact and the significance of the blood. And when you know the impact and the significance of the blood, you know all you need is the blood. <laughs> Somebody shot with me the blood, the blood. The blood. I don't know what's jumping off in your life. I don't know what kind of hell you're catching, but I dare you just start peeing the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Get it on your mouth, the blood, the blood. Your unsaved children, just start peeing the blood, the blood. Touch your health, touch yourself, the blood, the blood. Your mind going crazy mentally, you're unstable. Just touch yourself and say the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, because the blood does everything God can do. He wrapped his power and his influence in the blood. <laughs> and and, uh, 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 and um, uh, I almost tell you every week, there are many uh, adjectives and uh, imageries that the, uh, that the Bible uses to describe the character and the nature of God. But for the purpose of this particular teaching, I want to focus on this particular word that I believe that we don't talk about enough. And that is God, the Redeemer. I want to say that again. God, the Redeemer. See, some of us know him. Some of us know him as God the healer because you had that experience with them. Some of us know him as God the way maker because we had that experience with them. Some of us know him as God the advocate because you understood that he's the goal between. Some of us know him as God the comforter because we cried that night. We spent some time crying and we couldn't get nobody on the phone and nobody understood it and people got tired of us crying so they didn't answer our phone call so we knew him as God the comforter and, and some of us know him as God the keeper you know him that's God who will keep you sane in your membrane and some of us know him some of us may know him as God the merciful you you know him being a merciful God you know that there were some things that you deserved because of decisions you made that he held back you know him as God the merciful and some of us may know him as God the shepherd we know him as God the shepherd the God who keeps on leading and guiding come on and see you know God as shepherd but all of us can identify with this particular expression of his character there is one thing that we all can identify with him being in this room and that is God the redeemer I said there's one thing that we all can identify him in with and that is the character trait of him being a redeemer and I know some of you can't shout off that word right now because you don't have proper or you don't have any understanding of that word and the impact of his redemption on your own life. But can I tell you that it is because the redemptive work of God. It is because the redemptive work of God, it is God. And what that means is that's God taking care of a debt that we owed that we couldn't pay. His redemptive work is him taking care of debt, a debt that we owed that we could not pay. And this word, redeem, everybody, don't take it lightly. Don't take this word, redeem, lightly because this word, redeem, literally means to buy back. Y'all better come get me. And we are all products of this redemption work. And this word, redeem, is not passive. It is aggressive. 
This word, um, uh, this word redeem is not a settled word. This word redeem, uh, redeem is something that was absolutely necessary to happen in order for us to have life. In order for us to come back into a proper relationship with God. And what happened is, I told you, the redemptive work, the, the redemptive work of God is God settling a debt that we owe that we didn't have the capacity to pay back. So the word redeem means to buy back. Ah, there was a sentence on your life. And in order to get that sentence lifted off your life, God had to settle a debt that unless he stepped into it, you would not have walked through it. So he said, before I allowed the devil to kill something I birthed, to kill something, come on, I wish I had 10 people in here who understood that God stopped what the enemy meant for evil. And turned it around for your good. Not because you deserved it. But because you was a word. Did you hear what I just said? Not because it was something that you deserved. It was because you were a word. And if you were anything, you are the image. You are the image. You are the manifested image of the word of God. So God's like, whatever else I do, I got to create a hedge and a plan of protection on my word. I'm talking about you. You are the word that out of his mouth that he's protecting. He said, whatever else I can be, I cannot be a liar. So if I allow my word to fail, that means I fail. And I do everything but fail. So whatever else that you're trying to do, those people, those people are a word. And whatever else I make sure, I make sure that my word. Come on, I wish I had three people who knew the word. The Bible says he will perfect. Everything that concerns who? His word. I want you to take the you out and put the word in it because you are the manifested word of God. So God's like, I got to buy it back. I know they messed up. I know they jacked up. I know they turned away. I know they made some decisions without me in mind, but I got to get it back because my word is on it. And I honor my word above my name. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't fail. You, you can't fail. You can't die because you're a word. You're a word and his word fails not. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What do you mean? He don't change his mind about his word. If I ordained you a prophet, Jeremiah, you are a prophet. Even in a bad season, if I ordained you, come on somebody. God's like, if I ordained you to be, even in a bad season, you are still who I called you to be. I don't care what your season looking like now. God said you're still that. I don't care what your back is against right now. God said you're still that. I still called you who I called you and I didn't change my mind. Are you? You are just an anointed mess right now, but you're still anointed. You, you, you're just a messy prophet right now, but you're still a prophet. Come on. Come on, somebody. And I want you to know that whatever else the devil can take away, he can't take away your identity. Because he bought it back. Did you hear what I just said? Look at somebody. I know it's early in the message, but look at somebody and say, neighbor. Say, oh, neighbor. You are who God says you are. Because he bought it back. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He bought it back. He bought it back. He bought it back. He bought it back. He it back. And uh, what the devil would do he will try to attenuate your faith <laughs> by making you think just because you're in a rough season right now 
that God don't think of you the way <laughs> you've been, you know, you know, you know, when you read stuff like I am, when you read the word and it tells you that you're the head and not the tail, but your life don't look like it. When the word tells you that you shall be the lender and not the bar, but you got more month than you got money. The devil will use his word against him to attenuate, lessen, and diminish your faith. But I wish I had three people who understood that those who wait upon the Lord and that he is a God of his promises and his, oh man, and his promises for 10 people who know the word and his promises are yay and amen. Write the vision though it tarries. Wait because it shall speak and not lie. That word, I love this word, but that word literally means to buy back. And everybody, the cost of sin, sin had a cost. You hear what I said? I said sin had a cost. And the cost of sin was death. So God's like, I can't let you die because I got a word on you. So I got to do it myself. And so since the cost of sin was death, that means in order to buy it back, he couldn't buy it back with money, couldn't be bought back with influence, couldn't be bought back with power. It had to be bought back with a death. Something had to die. I wish I had. I wish I had. I wish I had some grateful people in here who understood that it should have been me. But God said, I'm going to take your place. And family, not only is it important to reflect and remember Je the, um, that Jesus died, but it's equally important to reflect on and remember the way he died. Did you hear what I just said? We have to focus on the way he died because how he died is important because, it's, because it was a necessary corresponding action based on what needed to take place in order for us to be redeemed, bought back. So when Jesus died, <laughs> don't miss this, everybody. And, okay, let, let, let me start here because there was, there was, this was pre-Jesus' death, right? Once a year, the uh, priests, the high priests, not just the priests. We had priests and we had high priests, which was the chief priests, right? They will go into the temple, into the holies of holies, right? And, and, and they would, I don't want to say the word yet because I'm going to bring it up later, but, but, but they would go in and they would, they would do stuff, sacrifice a bull. The bull was the sacrificial animal for sin, for the sin offering. They would sacrifice the bull, but I love this because, Deke, what I found out is that before the priest would go into the holies of holies, there were some preparations that he had to do before he went in. Uh, are y'all okay? <laughs> and, and one thing that he did that I want to highlight real quick is that before he went in, uh, Jabrisha, he would have to uh, light some coals, put them in the censer. <laughs> and he was instructed to pour perfume in them. So when he walked into the Holy of the Holies, that there was smoke going up before him. And according to Leviticus 2 and 2, it says that God identified the fragrance of the smoke with praise. So before he entered into the Holy of Holies, he had to come in already lit. You don't come in his presence to get lit. You come in his presence already. Enter into my with thanksgiving. And into my, I wish I had 10 people who said, Pastor, I didn't need Tracy side. I didn't need a song this morning. I walked in lit. I walked in with a praise. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I'm already lit. I'm, I'm, I, I came in. You didn't even have to preach. He already done enough for me. I owe him praise. So, <laughs> right? And 
I love this because, because it, now this is important. So he would kill, he would kill the bull. And so he goes in with the fragrance of praise. Don't miss this. Because there's something else that praise does that we miss. Because the Bible says that the smoke that God identifies with praise, it was to cover the mercy seat so that he couldn't see it. Because if the priest would see the mercy seat, he would die. So what then what praise does, it gives you mercy. It holds back what you deserve. I don't know when to praise God. I wish I had three people who can give God praise because you know it holds back stuff. It blocks stuff. Wait a minute. And not only does it block stuff that you see, it blocks stuff that you didn't see. And we ought to pause for the cause and give God praise for the stuff he blocked that never made it through the hedge. Y'all still sitting down. I said we need to give God praise for the stuff that he blocked that never got to us. The bullet, it was set up, but it never made it through the hedge because he blocked the seed and the unseen. Okay, old school, old school. We got to praise him because he covers us from the seen and unseen danger. Somebody shout, he blocked it. Y'all sit down. I'm, I, I got y'all took my time up. <laughs> Risha, I'm all right. And then when he goes in, he takes the blood from the bull. All right? Now we're talking about the sin offering. Let me make that plain, because there was different animals that that was that was crucial for different types of sacrifices. All right? Uh, okay, so we're talking about the sin offering. So he would take the blood from the bull. <laughs> and the text says he will sprinkle the blood. Because remember, we told you that the redemptive work took death. Right? So he would take the bull and he would instruct him to sprinkle everything in the Bible is significant. Every word. If, if you miss one, you'll miss it. It's possible that you'll miss the meaning of the whole text. He just, the Bible says that he just didn't sprinkle it once. He will sprinkle it seven times. One, two, three, four, five. Grace. Uh -huh. Six, man. Seven, completion. Oh, Y'all better come get me. And what the blood did, it completed. Look, every okay, uh, y'all all right? Give, 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 give me five minutes. Give me five minutes, okay? So, so, <laughs> I love this because, because the Bible says, please try not to lose your cool here, because the Bible says the priest will go in. He didn't look at the man, nor the lifestyle or the condition of the man. But what, but what was important was the life and the lifestyle of the sacrifice that covered the condition of the man. So he didn't die because there was a sacrifice that covered something that otherwise would not have been covered. Leviticus 17 and 11 says this, everybody, for the life <laughs> of the flesh is in the blood. I'm going to say it again. The life of the flesh is in the blood. I'm going to say it again. The life of the flesh is in the blood. I'm going to say it again because I want you to rehearse this every time you catch in hell and the devil is talking in your mind making you think you ain't going to make it. The life of the flesh is in the blood. 
every time the devil thinks that he got you, I want you to remember this, that the life, come on, of the flesh, come on, is in the blood. Every time you get a bad doctor's report and he tells you there's nothing else he can do, you say the life of the flesh is in the blood. I'm somebody walked out on you that you love, come on. You say the life of the flesh is in the blood. Come on, come on. Somebody talked about you, gossiped something about you, come on, stabbed you, you, come on. You say the life of the flesh is in the blood. You walk on the job, they tell you we can't use you no more. The job is shutting down. We moving to Mexico. You say the life come on, is in the blood. And when you understand this, you understand that no weapon formed against you shall prosper because the life, come on, of the flesh, come on, is in the blood. I don't care who stays or who walks away. The life of the flesh come on is in the blood and he promised never to leave me nor forsake come on David said I have never seen the righteous forsaken and his joy is not contingent upon who's with me his joy is not contingent upon who hires me his joy is contingent on him being in me because greater is he I wish I had a church in here greater is he that is in me than he that is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And, and, and this is why, coach, he could not die of a disease. This is why he couldn't die of a heart attack. This is why he couldn't die any kind of way. He had to die a certain way because blood needed to be shed. I wish I had. So, because we needed blood. He, he couldn't just go to sleep and die. And Jesus understood this because uh, at one point he questioned this. He says, the Bible says that he goes and he prays and he says, uh, just like some of us, we pray this prayer. And it's okay to say, God, is there another way? <laughs> That's what Jesus essentially prayed. He said, uh, can you remove this cup away from me? What he was asking was, Father, is there another way? Do I got to die like that? Do I got to deal with all this like, this way? Is there another course that I can take? And some of us have prayed the same prayer. God, well, how come I got to go through this? I know people far worse than me. <laughs> and they ain't going through nothing, nowhere near what I got to go through. Can I help you with that, everybody? For five people who can shout on this word, the greater your test. The greater your trial. Come on, the greater your blessing. I, okay, so if you're facing stuff that is not normal, that means God got something that's not, God's got an abnormal blessing for you that Deuteronomy says is going to overtake you. Somebody look at somebody and say, God's got a big size blessing for you. That's why you're facing, that's why you're catching the hell that you're facing. Because the hell got to almost match a blessing. I said almost. Because the Bible says this trial is not worthy to be compared to the unbelievable season. You about to walk into. Look at somebody tell them this is your season for acceleration. This is your season for the unbelievable. God's about to do something magnanimous. God's about to do something unforgettable. Eyes have not seen. No, I wish I had a church here on Sunday morning that would say God's have not seen nor ears heard the great things that God has. Yeah, yeah. That's why you are a gallon and pint-sized people are walking out of your life because they don't have the capacity to contain you. You're crying about a pint-sized person. You're a gallon. You come on, they don't have the capacity to contain you. That's why they can't hold your secret. <laughs> the 
Did you hear what I just said? Somebody shout, we needed the blood. This is why Jesus had to be nailed in his hands and in his feet and in his side because blood had to be shed because the life of the flesh is in the blood. What is, come on, say it. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Come on, say it. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Come on, say it again. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Ready? Hey, we just got out of an impactful service here at FLM. I'm talking about it was amazing, man. We preached from this particular subject, the power of the blood. If you're watching and still on, thank you for tuning in. And I pray that this message was a blessing to you. And if it was, like and share. Don't keep it all to yourself. The power of the blood. Remember that the life of the flesh is in the blood. There's still power. Wonder work of power in the blood. Thanks for tuning in. FLM for life, baby. God bless you. Peace.